This is the plant diversity lecture um, part two. We're going to start with vascular plants. We just covered the non-vascular plants, um, including the mosses. There we go. Um, okay, so in vascular plants, we have vascular tissue, and vascular tissue consists of xylem and phloem. <clears throat> Xylem tissue transports water and minerals up the plant from the roots to the shoots. Um, and you can see um, xylem tissue illustrated here. And then phloem transports sugars and proteins that are produced in the leaf of the plant primarily um, because they're produced by um, photosynthesis and other chemical reactions. Um, but basically the food of the pl that the plant pr um, produces is transported throughout the rest of the plant. And, and that tissue is called phloem. Roots are found in plants with vascular tissue. Um, make sure that you remember that mycorrhizae are very common in land plants and that is a relationship a symbiotic relationship where fungi from the glomeromycota um, phylum grow symbiotically with the roots of plants that is called mycorrhizae and that helps the plant um, by increasing the surface area so that it can absorb more water and minerals from the soil so most land plants contain mycorrhizae. The leaves of the plant are photosynthetic organs. So that is where photosynthesis occurs. Um, in seedless vascular plants, which include club mosses, whisk ferns, um, ferns, which are probably the ones that you would recognize uh, the quickest out of this group. Um, all of these are vascular plants that produce spores instead of seeds. So if you look at the life cycle of a fern, this is how it works. The fern is going to have a gametophyte, which is like a heart-shaped leaf that lies flat on the forest, the floor of the forest. Um, within that heart-shaped leaf, there's gonna be an archegonium, which will contain the egg, and an antheridium, which will, um, this is the antheridium, which will contain the sperm. And maybe I can bring this down some. I don't, I don't think I can, but anyway, the, um, Male and female gametophytes are on the same um, structure. They're, they're um, all found on the same gametophyte. So they're, they're not separate like they were with the mosses. But the sperm still swims to the egg and fertilization occurs and then you have a diploid zygote. The zygote divides by mitosis and forms the sporophyte, which is what you recognize as the fern plant. So the dominant generation for the fern is the sporophyte. And something that will probably help you um, to remember this is the only group who has a dominant gametophyte generation are the seedless non-vascular plants, the mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. All other plants have a dominant sporophyte generation. So when you're looking, the plant that you recognize when, when um, when I say fern, the plant that you think of when I say the word fern is going to be the sporophyte. That's the dominant generation for the fern. Now, if you turn the fronds, the little leaf-like structures, over, you will see these brown dots called sporangia um, on some of the leaves. And those sporangia contain um, and produce the spores. So they divide by meiosis and produce the haploid spores. The spores land on the ground and germinate, and then those haploid spores germinate into a haploid gametophyte. So it's very similar to the moss um, life cycle. 
Then we have the evolution of seed plants, and the seed is going to contain the embryo as well as food for the embryo. Okay, now we are talking about the gymnosperms, which are also vascular, but now they um, now we're getting into the plants that produce seeds. So gymnosperm actually means naked seed. Um, and that means that the seed is not enclosed within a fruit. So that's what naked seed actually means. Uh, the gametes are separate. The female and male gametes are separate. Pollination occurs, so the sperm is, instead of the sperm containing flagella and swimming to the egg, the sperm is found within a pollen grain and the wind carries it to the female um, gamete. And then um, tracheids are part of the vascular system of gymnosperms and they transport water and solutes. So, um, okay, gymnosperm seeds are not enclosed in an ovary or fruit. Rather, they are exposed on combs or modified leaves. All right, here is an example of a conifer. Conifers are a one type of um, gymnosperm. So you can see here that this is a pine tree and it produces both male and female cones. We recognize the female cones, but the male cones are also produced. If you look at a pine tree carefully, especially during the spring, you will see the male cones that grow on the lower branches and they're, um, they're not as woody. They're not, they're not as, um, you know, they're not, they're not um, as tough as the female cones. Um, And this shows you how the pollen from the male comb um, lands on the female comb down at the base of one of the um, scales on the comb. I'm trying to find my pointer again, sorry. But anyway, the, the, um, if you look down at the bottom right, the ovule is, a name, is the name for the egg. So the pollen grain lands at the base of the cone and then a pollen tube grows and that pollen tube carries the sperm to the egg. Um, the phylum coniferophyta, the conifers, um, includes the pine trees, the Fraser firs, uh, that kind of thing. And then we have another group in the gymnosperms are called the cycads or cycadophyta. They look like palm trees. They have really large, these, these cones are, are very, very large, these female cones. Um, they're pollinated by beetles instead of the wind. We see um, insect pollination more in the angiosperms or flowering plants, but these cycads, um, they grow in the tropics and they are, they are pollinated by beetles. And then we have Ginkophyta or the Ginkgo biloba. The netophytes, which include ephedra. You may have heard of ephedra as um, a compound from the ephedra plant called ephedrin is um has been used in weight loss and, and um, that kind of thing. It's kind of a natural caffeine. And then there's the Wellwitchia. The Wellwitchia is interesting because it, it looks really, really old because it is. I think um, that it can live to be at like a thousand years old. So these are netophytes are another group. Um, they're shrubs and they are another group of gymnosperms. Then we have flowering plants called angiosperms. And they are now today the dominant plant. Flowering plants. Um, let's see, the flowering plants produce a flower and a fruit. The fruit is actually the ripened ovary of the plant. Um, and we're gonna go over the parts of the flower right now. The, um, 
Let's see. Okay, so if you look at a flower, the sepals are the little um, leafy green, the little green leaves basically that enclose the flower when it's still a bud before it buds and opens up into a flower. Um, and the sepals, whenever the flower does um, open up, a lot of times the sepals will wither away and you won't see them anymore. They'll turn brown um, and they'll shrink. Then we have the petals of the flower, which are designed to attract pollinators. And we have the male and the female parts. The male parts are called, the entire structure is called a stamen. Oh, this right here. Okay, come come down to the right. Sorry. The stamens or androecyums are the male structures, and they're going to contain um, on the end. They're going to contain an anther, which produces the pollen, and the filament is the stalk that attaches it to the flower. Then you have the carpels, which are the female structures. They contain a stigma, a style, and then ovules within the ovary. The ovules are the eggs. Um, and sometimes you, you see the male and the female structures within the same flower. A flowering plant life cycle, um, I just wanted to show you because it's going to be real similar. The plant itself is the sporophyte, so it does have a dominant sporophyte generation. Um, but the, gem, uh, the um, gametophytes are the pollen grain, and then the female um, structure called the, let's see, the embryo sac. Okay, so the embryo sac and the pollen grain are the gametophytes of the plant. So flowering plants have a very reduced gametophyte um, structure and the primary, the, the largest portion of the plant by far is the sporophyte. There is part of the life cycle of the plant is called um, the part where the sperm fertilizes the egg um, is called double fertilization. And I do want to go over that with you. Okay, I wasn't sure how much more time we have left. We have about two minutes left. Okay, so um, double fertilization is what we're talking about. I do want to make sure I go over double fertilization with you. Um, I don't know how to get rid of this bar. I'm so sorry. Okay, anyway, um, with double uh, fertilization, what you have is you have two sperm inside of the pollen grain, and one sperm fertilizes the egg, and the other one um, becomes the endosperm of the seed, okay? So um, the endosperm is the part of the seed that, um, that uh, feeds the embryo. Basal angiosperms are uh, uh, older types of flowering plants. Um, we, we divide most of the flowering plants into monocots and eudicots, um, depending on the number of cotyledons in the seedlings. And a cotyledon is a seed leaf, um, an embryo seed leaf. But we can also tell the monocots from the dicots by different things like um, the monocots, if you look at their leaves, this leaf um, looks a lot like grass. It's very long. And if you look at, at the vein, the veins that run in these leaves, they're parallel to each other. Um, rice, wheat, bananas, all of these are monocots. They're going to have a single cotyledon or a single uh, seed leaf in the embryo. Cabbage, beans, and peaches are dicots. If you look at the peach, you can see um, the leaves are have a, they don't have a parallel venation. They have like a um, branching veins. This one has a mid vein and then veins that branch off the side of it. 
and then you can see the cabbage leaves definitely have 